Today we're going to talk about quarter inch feet and the various ones we carry in our shop. This first one I'm going to demonstrate is the quarter inch foot. It's just the first one usually that we offer. It is our most popular. It has a little black guide here on the side that helps keep your seam allowance in check. And so we're going to go ahead and get started so I can show you the differences between all of them. One little tip I'm going to give you about the Singer Featherweight. Before you start sewing and before you lower your presser bar is to line up your needle first. And you lower your needle first thing. That locks your stitch in and prevents the thread from backing out of the needle and it also helps prevent thread jams and things like that. Then you lower your presser bar and hold your thread tails. You can see there that the stitch um, or the guide right there is holding in that fabric edge and that's what it's designed to do. This particular quarter inch foot, like I said, is our most popular and it produces a scant quarter inch foot or scant quarter inch seam. So it's going to be just a hair under a quarter inch. I'm currently using in my uh, machine Aurifil thread, which is 50 weight. I also really like the Presencia. Both of those threads will give you a very fine, accurate stitch. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take our little ruler here. And I'm going to use another piece of fabric just so you can see the line when I'm measuring. Okay, little Creative Grids ruler. You can see the black line there that's on the stitch, the stitching line, and the black line of the fabric, or I mean, and the black line is outside the fabric. That means it's just a hair under a quarter of an inch. It's a scant. So when you press your seam ov over on the back side, it's going to give you the desired quarter of an inch, the true quarter of an inch. So this is the scant quarter inch foot. And the way you attach it to your machine, I will show you real quick. Let me unscrew this to show you. Is it slides up the presser bar. And then you put your screw and you hold this foot up as high as it'll go with the screw and you screw it down as tight as you can. If you need to get it exceptionally tight, we do carry thumb screws that have a, a, a groove down here that you can then use a screwdriver to get really good and tight. Okay, let's move on to the next foot. Okay, this next quarter inch foot is the spring hinged quarter inch foot. And what makes it unique is that it has this fork that is just like the fork on the original presser foot. So it wraps around the presser bar just like the original presser foot did. So it makes it a little easy to attach to the machine. So screw that on tightly. This one has um, the black guide on the side but it does not have the red stitch lines for cross seams. So if you needed to match up a seam or something, it, this one does not have that one, but this original scant quarter inch foot does. So that's another feature of this one that I forgot to mention. Okay, so once again, holding your thread tails, lower your needle first, then your presser bar, making sure your fabric is within that little guide and commence stitching. It keeps your stitch nice and straight. Okay, now we'll measure this again so you can see where it measures. So it's still a scant, just slightly, it's almost like in between a true and a, and a scant, but there it is on the stitching line, right there. Let me turn this just a little bit so you can see. There is the line on the stitches, there is the line, and it's just barely on the edge of the fabric and barely off the edge. So you could probably use it for either a true or a scant, just know the differences of the two feet. 
Okay, we'll do the next one. Okay, this is the open toe quarter inch foot. It also has the red cross lines. It does not have a black guide on the side, so for those people who find that the black guide kind of gets in the way when they're going over a seam allowance of, you know, when you're um, piecing your blocks together, sometimes these cross seams, um, those black guides can get in the way as you're going over them. Um, so some people prefer something a little more open. And this one is very, very popular. Um, it is a scant, so if you want to use it as a scant quarter inch foot, you sure can. Once again, lower your needle first, lower your presser bar, and you're going to you put the fabric right on the edge of that foot. So you kind of have to watch. This one is great for half square triangles, paper piecing. The only thing that I will caution you is that when you get to the end of a seam, because of this open space, you do kind of have to hold this down a little bit just to, and go slow to guide it to the needle so that it stays within the seam allowance. Okay, we will measure this one. And you can see the difference between this one and the one before. This one is most definitely a scant. See, there's the stitching line, there's the line just outside the fabric edge, consistent all the way down. So that's with the open toe quarter inch foot. And again, this one and the regular quarter inch foot are two most popular. Okay, let's do the next foot. Okay, here we are again. This is what's called the little foot. And I will show you what this one does. I'm going to start off there. There's no guide or black guide on the side to keep it in check. You just follow along with the edge of the foot there. People really like this one because of its clear visibility. this again. This one is more of a scant. We're going to get a scant quarter inch seam with this one. Okay, this last foot is the patchwork quarter inch foot. It actually comes with a little bar that you can slide in this side or even in the other direction and it will have like a uh, guide there that you can do uh, uh, decorative stitching if you want lines like equidistant to, equidistant to each other. Um, I don't use it with the bar, I just take it out and use it as the foot by itself. Um, you wouldn't want to do any quilting with it, like it's called a patchwork uh, quarter inch foot, um, so I wouldn't do any patchwork quilting with it just because the batting and the quilt sandwich it would really bunch up. But for piecing it is great. Um, I'm currently using it for the Farmer's Wife um, 1930s um, blocks and it will give you a true quarter inch seam. So you line up the fabric edge there to the fright, right front toe Go ahead and stitch this line, and then we'll measure it so that you can see. Okay. So there is the stitching line. And there's the edge of the fabric. So this produces a true quarter inch seam. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call in the shop or go to our website to, at www.singer-featherweight.com or april1930s.com.